Okay, we'll get started. We'd like to welcome Justin Thomas into the interview room here at the Genesis Scottish Open. Uh, Justin, uh, your 15th PGA Tour win earlier this year at the PGA Championship. If we can just get some comments on that victory and then also your season up to this point. Uh, yeah, the, the year is flying by again. Um, it's, it's crazy, you know, how quickly it's just a couple events left before the playoffs. So it was nice to, to win the PGA for many reasons. But, um, you know, first and foremost, to, to, to knock enough, another major off the belt, but just getting a, a little better position uh, in the FedEx Cup going into the playoffs. So I don't feel like I, you know, have to press quite as much. But I've been playing really well, really solid. Just um, definitely haven't converted as many into wins as I would like, but um, but still showing a lot of positive improvements and signs. So I just feel like just trying to stay patient and keep plugging at it and, and hopefully let some good stuff happen. A uh, couple top ten finishes in your last two starts here at the Scottish Open. Just talk a little bit about uh, this event, how much it means to you. Yeah, it's it's cool. I've, for the As much as I love Lynx Golf and the Open Championship, I, I've really not played it very well uh, in my – in my career, so a couple of years ago, I was just trying to pretty much try something different uh, to to try to stop finishing tied for 50th or miss the cut at the Open. So I needed to do something different, and I'm I'm really glad I decided to come play the Scottish a couple of years ago because it's um, I feel like it's been good preparation for me. It's uh, it's a fun golf course. I mean, it's not it clearly isn't overly challenging. I mean, like most links courses, it's very dependent on the weather you get, and we've we've had nice weather the last couple of times, but. Um, haven't had many days like it is out there today <laughs> at the moment, but I just feel like it's really good opportunity to try to come get my game in shape and, and also get acclimated to the time change, the weather, just everything about it, the, the turf, and, uh, you know, try to get in good form playing next week. Okay, we'll open up questions. Let's go right here. Justin, um, honest answer, please. How good does Guinness taste at what time, whatever time in the morning that was? <laughs> Uh, at 9.45, it was, um, <laughs> I guess you could say it was kind of like a filling breakfast because it is pretty filling. But I honestly, and I, I, the day prior was the first, no, that was the first Guinness I'd had. So, no, 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 the night prior was the first Guinness I'd had. Um, I don't even remember when we were getting in and whatnot, but um so it, it was it was better than i thought it was to be perfectly honest like it, it was something that i yeah i'm clearly I, I don't know if i could necessarily go have seven or eight of them but um at least at my uh drinking level if you will but i definitely enjoyed a couple of them it was, it was nice and how was the trip overall i mean was, was that a key part of your plans to, to go and play places like lahinch etc yeah it was really fun i mean i i had never had the opportunity to go play in jp's pro-am and i was um I had unbelievable expectations going into it, but it somehow exceeded them. It was truly, it was incredible. I've never, I mean, the crowds and the people that were out there, I was I was just telling John the way here, it was like every hole walking to the tee, you got a standing ovation. Every green, you got a standing ovation. Like everybody was just so excited for all of us to be there. Um, there was just so, so many people. I can't explain, I'm just, I'm, I was blown away at a pro-am how many people were out there and the support that Ireland got. But to have the opportunity to go play Tralee was, was really cool. Um, my, only, my only negative is that I didn't go earlier and I couldn't go play more of those golf courses. So uh, it was a very, very enjoyable couple of days. All right, let's go Martin and then Sean. Justin, you've been very honest and open in anything you've said about Live Golf over, mm -hmm. the, over the last few weeks. What are your thoughts on, on four Live Golf players being in the field this week? Um, yeah, I've, uh, I mean, I guess I was, I was surprised, but I also, I, uh, I'm not near smart enough to know legally what that means. And to be perfectly honest, I don't, I, I probably don't care enough to like go into it to, to say I have, I'm, I'm super one side or the other. And, and I, again, because I don't know enough, I can't honestly give an opinion because I just legally, I don't know what's happening kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things. It is what it is, and and I don't know if it makes a difference because the tournament's here versus the states or whatnot. But um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm just trying to go win a golf tournament, and uh, and the fact that they're playing, so be it. Yeah, going forward, how important is it for the PGA Tour and DP World Tour that, that you, Rory, Colin Morikawa, and others stay loyal to the traditional tours against what's happening? I think, yeah, I think it's more stay loyal to the 
to the tradition that we're doing as opposed to against what they're doing. Uh, not that we don't disagree, but I just think it's, and, and I, I'll be the first to say I've gotten wrapped up emotionally from time to time. And it, I mean, I'm allowed to do that. I'm passionate about it and I feel a certain way, but at the end of the day, I need to myself and others first and foremost need to focus on playing good golf because that's the number one priority. But if we can just continue to focus on improving our product and getting our product as good as possible, not only for now, the rest of my career, but future superstars that are going to be coming out, because if we can make this, continue to make this the best place to play, bar none, just as it is right now, then at the end of the day, we have nothing to worry about. Um, you never know what's going to happen in terms of, of of other entities or other things being thrown out there. But um, I think we're all very obviously pleased with where we're at and, and we're just continuing to make strides and progress and changes that are going to benefit everybody. Let's go to Sean in the back. What have you identified as reasons why your open record maybe isn't what you hope it to be? Um, I mean, a couple of them were... I mean, it sounds awful to say, but I haven't, I haven't had a good draw in an open, so that definitely doesn't help. But the last couple haven't been significant. Uh, I mean, the first one, I think, with Troon, that was all. I've never in my life played, like, so well and grinded so hard to finish, like, 60th. Like, I just truly felt like I couldn't. It was like every morning go out, it'd be blowing 25 and raining, and I'd, like, just grind my tail off to shoot 73, and I'd go watch golf in the afternoon. The sun would come out, and it would... And I was like, well, welcome to the Open. It's my first Open championship. So, um, but that's just a part of it. You know, I hope over a 20, 30-year span of playing in this event that I'm going to get my fair share of good ones. And, um, but I think also it's, it's adapting my game plan based on the weather conditions. And, and a lot of people are going to have to deal with the same thing. But I think I, like I do in the States, is I, I go into, I mean, you know, for the most part, I go play number one at Augusta, and it's, it's going to be a driver of three wood. There's not, there's nothing else. There's, there, I'm not going to change anything, whether it's raining or whatever, wind off the left, right, down into. My line just might change. Whereas I think, you know, I've gotten to some holes in the past. I remember I just specifically like Carnoustie. I think it's six is that par five. Like was it Hogan's hole or whatever? And I mean that was a hole in the practice round. I was like, okay, like I can, I'm gonna hit driver. I can hit it past these bunkers if I hit it right. I'll be in the fescue. I'll lay up anyway. But if I have an opportunity knocking on the screen, like this is a good chance for me to make a three or a four. And I got to that hole and it was like kind of raining. It was off the left and same type of thing. I kind of stuck with my game plan, if you will. And I decided to hit driver and I hit it in one of those little pot bunkers because I couldn't get over because it was raining. I made seven, whereas I should have the maturity and and uh, understanding of what's going on to just hit a two iron or hit a four iron and just play the hole with what the conditions are giving you. And I've unfortunately learned it the hard way, but um, hopefully I'll adapt to that going forward. And your pro debut was at St. Andrews, correct? Pardon me? Wasn't your pro debut at St. Andrews? It was, yeah. What do you, what do you remember about just the course? What were your first impressions of it? I remember a couple things. I mean, I remember the first time I ever played St. Andrews in my life. It was it was uh, pretty similar to today, but raining. And my dad and I, he was caddying for me. We were like, let's like I should go play practice round in this because I don't. I mean, if it's doing this in the states, I'm just not playing golf. So I want to try to get used to it. And I had driver six iron into one, and I hold it for a two. So that was a pretty good first uh, first experience of St. Andrews. And then I also remember. I mean, so lucky in terms of the three golf courses, the double tee start, whatever, that my first tee shot as a pro was number one at St. Andrews. And uh, I remember thinking if I missed this fairway, I'd probably need to retire before this career even starts. So I was glad to get my career off and running with a fairway at number one. All right, let's go over here to the west. Hi, Justin. Uh, you said that Lynx golf is an acquired taste for you and, and you are getting better. But... How important will it be to have somebody as experienced as, say, Bones when you are playing, uh, I mean, not just this week, but more importantly, next week on a golf course like St. Andrews? Yeah, I think it'll be very helpful. I, I mean, um, you know, Jimmy was very, very experienced as well in Lynx golf, but, you know, with, with Bones, obviously, having an open championship under his belt, that's a that's a, a big deal. And, and also being around St. Andrews a couple times, I think, is big, because although I've played there and it's, 
it's a very similar course to an Augusta or, or Pebble Beach to where even before you go or play it, you kind of know what it's like just from the history and watching it so often. But there's so many, whether it be blind tee shots and different wind opportunities, um, that his experience there will be very helpful just in terms of knowing when you do get those kind of crazy days or you do get uh, abnormal weather conditions, if you will, or gets super firm, whatever, he's gonna, I'm going to be able to rely on him uh, quite a bit at a place like that. And also I wanted to ask you, what's the most enjoyable hole or what's the most challenging hole that you thought was at St. Andrews? I mean, if it is not the 17th, even better. If, what, what is really... I mean, it, it changes with the day. It really does. If, if you can get... Um, I mean, is it 14, that par five? I mean, if you get that hole in and off the left, I mean, that's a, that all of a sudden becomes a very challenging hole. But I, I think 17 is, is it's a very cliche answer, but I think it's cliche for a reason, and it's just because it's a hard hole. Um, you know, even if it's downwind and you have a short club in, it's going to be hard to hold the fairway. And if you do hold the fairway, it's going to be really hard to hold the green. And then if it's into the wind, you're just going to have a long club and you can't carry as much. So kind of given whatever wind conditions you get, I would say, as a whole, 17 is, is still going to be the hardest in my eyes. Okay, let's go right here in the front and over to Swami. Hi, Justin. Um, the, the live guys have been kept apart from the rest of the draw for the first two days, but that may not be the, probably won't be the case of the weekend. How would you feel about playing with any one of them? Do you think it would be awkward? Would you relish it? Would you be talking to them? How, how do you think it would go for you? I don't know. I don't. Th I think it. I wouldn't think anything other than it'd be normal but um i mean i don't even know how many guys are playing this week so four so um i mean if i know all four of them then it'll be it'll be fine it'll be easy but if i don't it's not like i would talk to them whether they you know what i'm saying it, it just um i i think it'd be one of those things it would it would probably be made a bigger situation than it is um i don't necessarily think we're going to be having any like gamesmanship or or uh, you know, needling each other out there, and at the end of the day, they're here for the same reason we are, and that's just trying to play well and, and give yourself an opportunity to win the Scottish Open. But um, yeah, if it so happens that it comes to that point, and, and you and you have an opportunity to, you know, you're trying to, I guess, beat one of them, if you want to call it, to win the tournament, it might feel a little bit better. But I'm sure they would say the same thing. Um, and you have been quite outspoken. Uh, Thus far, have you had any pushback from any of the live guys about what you've said? I, I know I haven't. I haven't. Um, I just I I try not to like read too much or, or kind of look into it. I mean, I'm just answering the questions for for how I'm being asked and, and saying how I feel or what I think about it. I'm not. Uh, I feel like the more I read or the more I listen to what else is going on, uh, potentially the more frustrated or upset I'll get or. Um, I don't want to say sensitive to it, but just kind of, or just, I just don't want to get too wrapped up in it. I mean, I, I, I made that mistake early on, and it's, it's a distraction. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm focused on what I'm trying to do, and, and I'm, I'm just really trying to do that. And whenever I'm asked about it, which unfortunately nowadays is, is not necessarily by you all, but just, I mean, players, friends, whatever it is, like it's, it's a daily conversation, unfortunately. But that's where we're at, and you got to deal with it. Um, but I haven't necessarily had any pushback or altercations by any means. Um, you know, they, they've said what they've said, we've said what we've said, and it's just a part of it. Okay, over here to the left, Swami. Uh, Justin, I know you've spoken a lot about legacy and how you want to be with the tour because of that, and I'm sure money doesn't play a role in that. But have you done any math in terms of what people tend to lose when they leave the tour in terms of of their sponsorships from various sponsors, which adds up to a tidy sum over a period of three to five years, as against what they might get in terms of an assurance or a guarantee when they sign up. And then, of course, being on the tour also means a lifetime of opportunities, which may not be there on the other side. I haven't personally done the math. Um, just because my interest level is not very high, I think it's pretty, pretty obvious, but it's... Um, I mean, it, it, and a part of it is just one of those things I don't, I probably don't care to or want to because I know it's, it's, you can't compare those two situations. They're very different. But, um, you know, all I know is it just, yeah, I, I, 
very fortunate to have a pretty pretty cool little home office with some with some great trophies from the PGA Tour, and I take great pride in those. And um, I'm very, and I also understand that I'm not not everybody's in the same financial position that I am. That I can sit up here and speak on behalf of everybody, saying that it's not about the money, it's not about this. And I, and I've said that that people are allowed to do that, but it just in terms of me, or in terms of maybe other guys that are in, in my position. I just I don't agree with that, or I don't necessarily see how it could be a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, you have so many opportunities. I mean, more opportunities than I even know than I could than I could end up getting to continuing to do what I'm doing, playing on tour, and um, and you know, we just hope to keep creating memories and legacy and history, and uh, and produce some some great golf tournaments like I'm sure we're going to this week. Quick question. Did you follow the results of the two events which have been held so far in uh, London and then in Portland? Did you follow them? Did you see who, who did what? I mean, I saw who had won, but I, I definitely didn't follow them by any means. Okay. Let's go to the back, and then we'll come up to Craig. Hi, Justin. Uh, just in terms of the top quality players that we have here, 14 of the world's 15, how does the Scottish Open rank now in your calendar? Where does it feature in amongst for you personally, but also all the players, is it a conversation about how important this competition is now? It's definitely getting up there, and I think the you know the the partnership and, and now having so many PGA Tour guys here is cool, and, and I, it it's only adding to the strength of field. I mean, this is if you throw out the majors, I would have to think that this is going to be one of the two, three, four best fields that we play the entire year. Which you know for the Scottish Open for you know, for Scotland, for the DP World Tour, PGA Tour, like that's a huge deal, and it should be. And um, everybody involved should be very proud of that. And I know I'm I'm happy and proud to be here. And it's um, you know some some very impressive uh, and and unbelievable players have not only played here but won here and won this tur- not necessarily here but this tournament. So it is, um, and this just kind of goes back to what you know we we're saying. It's 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 adding your name to that list. It's becoming a part of that history. And uh, it's something that I, I definitely want to be a part of. But um, I got, you know, 14 of the top 15 and plenty of other good ones to, to try to beat. So it'll be a fun week. All right, let's take a few more. Let's go far left. Way over here, Justin. Obviously, a lot of anticipation about Tiger's appearance in St. Andrews next week. We're all looking forward to it. I'm sure you are, even as a, a competitor. <clears throat> what can you tell us? You know him better than most. What can you tell us about where he is just now in terms of his game and you know what we should maybe expect from him next week. Any conversations you've even had with him? I mean, talk to him some, but uh, I would say, I mean, anybody who who had a TV probably watched all 36 holes that he that he played at, at Adair, so, uh, and I didn't see any, so you guys would probably know better than me, but um, we kept joking with him and Rob, you know, all of us were talking about our legs being sore. We were asking if his butt was sore sitting on that cart the last couple of days, but... Um, no, I mean, I know that he's he's been circling this on his calendar for a while, and, I mean, he's been vocal about that. And um, it's, it's I think, his favorite golf course in the world, and he loves it and, and obviously has, has had some great success there. And it's um, it's probably going to seem like a pretty easy walk compared to Augusta and Southern Hills. So I'm, uh, I know I'm excited for, for him to be there, but at the same time, like the other events, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not – I'm hoping for the best for him, but I'm not worried about him. You know, I'm trying to to get myself and my game in the best condition as I can. But uh, I know uh, everybody will be very uh, eagerly anticipating and, and ready to watch him play St. Andrews because it's it's going to be a pretty uh, historic week. Okay, let's go. Still, yeah. Justin, can I just ask you? hearted one on a serious subject. We've, we've giggled in this room quite Sorry, a lot. I just can't hear you. Duh. We've giggled quite a lot in this room about the fact that you grow the game. Grow in the game? Grow in the game. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I definitely, um, I, I could chalk that up as things I never thought that I would do, uh, as play, play in, 
be shown on Nickelodeon playing in a golf tournament at 29 years old, but I, I'm pretty glad that I was. It, it, it's, it got great, great feedback from people. Um, uh, it was freezing cold when you're when you're covered in slime. That I will say uh, in those LA nights, but it was it was really cool. I mean, how how good of a job they did with the, just the the display of it and the graphics and everything and and the creativity that they they have and and that is that's what it's all about. I mean, we're it's an opportunity for us to to reach outside of you know this group right here. I mean, you guys are going to see us play every week, whether it's on Golf Channel, Sky Sports, CBS, NBC, whatever it is. But to have the opportunity for, like you said, the, the six, seven-year-old that's watching Nickelodeon every night with their family, with their parents, and and says, like, oh, wow, like, that golf looks pretty fun. That's pretty cool. You know, like, maybe I want to get involved in that. And if it means that 10 kids from however many watch that show that night decide they want to start playing golf, then I would call that a success. It's not – Yeah, absolutely. No, I I promise you that. Yeah, they weren't. Um, they, if they had the opportunity to watch Paw Patrol or SpongeBob or the PGA Championship that night, if I was seven years old, well, I'm probably not a good example. I probably would have chose the PGA, but <laughs> any other kid would choose, you know, the the show on Nickelodeon. So I think that that's a that's a, just a great example of just, like I said, even if it's just a a couple kids that have the opportunity to want to go play golf and then end up doing it and. They say to the, you know, like it's exactly like you said. Some kids like me grow up saying like, "Oh, I wanna, I wanna grow up to win the PGA." And some kids might say, "Oh, I wanna be playing in the Slime Cup." And um, it's kind of bizarre to even just say and hear come out of my own mouth. But if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. All right, let's take our last two over here. We'll start with Martin. Justin, apologies for taking you away for Slime Cup to Live Golf again. <laughs> According to Taylor Gooch, the team element of Live Golf must be similar to a Ryder Cup. I'm just wondering your experiences, especially at Whistling Straits, the way you got the fans fired up. Yeah. Is he correct in saying that? Um, I, he's definitely incorrect saying that. And, I mean, I some people said things like, I did an interview yesterday at the or two days ago at JP's, and I compared this crowd's Ryder Cup that was in no way shape or form a shot at him at um I think he he gave himself a shot enough even just speaking a quote like that um but it, it just yeah you can't you can't compare those I mean there's there's no event on tour that's like the Ryder Cup or the President's Cup um until you stand on a tee you know in France and there's what 10,000 people there and and I feel like I wouldn't even be able to get a golf ball on a tee. I'm so nervous and my hands are shaking so bad. Um, then, yeah, I probably wouldn't comment on saying that one is like the other because uh, it's not. Okay. Yep, last one. Justin, um, this, so Scotland is obviously, they call it the home of golf. There are so many interesting things that you see on the golf course, outside the golf course. Last night I was at a di diner at about 10 o'clock and I saw two guys in their golf shoes with a pitching wedge and a putter in their hand and just walking in to eat gelatos. Have you ever seen or experienced something over here which made you think, okay, wow, this place is different when it comes to golf? For sure. Uh, I Actually, I joked... Um I had this guy, this guy Danny caddied for me uh, the last couple of days at the JP McManus Pro Am, and he was the GM at Old Head, which is an unbelievable course in Ireland, and um, I had a great time with him. But I didn't play. Pro I mean, we on Sunday, like I said, we went and played Tralee, and then got out there on on Monday and played and whatever. Hit my drive down the first hole, and like I had like 158 yards in the. I mean, to like a. a pin in the center of the green like downwind and nine iron like should be hitting this inside of 10 15 feet all day and I hit it to you know 35 feet and every single person clapped and I just handed Danny the club and I was just like well you know we're in the UK we got to clap for for all the shots we wouldn't be getting those claps if we were back in the state so it's it's stuff like that it's just the the respect for the game of golf and um how excited everybody gets. I mean, we had, you know, a couple hundred people following us when, when Jordan Rick and I went and played Tralee and it's like, and they aren't like, yeah, they want to maybe have the opportunity to get a picture or an autograph, but like, they just want to watch us play golf. They want to see the shots we hit. They want to, you know, hear the sound that it makes the flight it, it, it has. And, um, 
It is, and, and, and golf is unbelievable in, in the States as well. I'm not saying that it isn't. It's just it's different, like you said, and it's, it's such a – it just has so much history over here, and um, it's, it's definitely something I wish that I could – I wish it was closer so I could come over here more and spend some more time and play some different places because I've never had a bad time over here playing golf for sure. All right, Justin, thank you for your time. Best Thanks. of luck this week.